I have lived almost seven decades. Most of these years have been adventurous, packed with new vistas, familiar paths, mysteries, messes, mountaintops, and a few dark valleys. All have resulted in discoveries about God, life, self, and people. One of the most important discoveries came from reading A.W. Tozer's The Knowledge of the Holy and being challenged with his statement. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. I want to tell you two stories that explain why I have not been able to get away from that statement for almost half a century. An Unlikely Messenger About a decade ago, I received a call from the president of Trinity International University and Trinity Evangelical Divinity School informing me that they wanted to confer an honorary doctorate on me for three decades of work on behalf of marriages and families. He then invited me to speak at their commencement ceremonies. I was humbled to receive such an honor and surprised that they would ask me to address the graduating classes of both the university and the seminary. Although I had a graduate degree from Dallas Theological Seminary, I didn't have a doctorate. I could picture myself standing in front of hundreds of professors, most of them with PhDs from prestigious institutions, and reading their thoughts. What's a guy like him doing in a place like this? Even so, I accepted the invitation. Then a second emotion took over, fear. What could I say to the undergrads and seminarians that would be of any value? They'd studied under some of the top biblical scholars in the world. Hadn't they pretty much heard it all? And so I did what I try to do whenever I'm confronted with an opportunity that taps into my inadequacies. I prayed. For months. As I prayed, I began to think about these students and what they were going to do. Many would go to work for corporations. Some would become pastors. Others would be teachers, professors, authors and some would pioneer ministries, both domestic and global. Others would take jobs in every imaginable sector of our economy. A few would serve in the military. Each one would be stepping out of the spiritual incubator of the classroom and into the rushing stream of God's work. They'd experience life, the challenges and benefits of marriage, children, bills, debt, health issues, and the like all while attempting to walk with God and faithfully obey Him. Real family life. A question began to form in my mind. Could I give them, in one message, the essence of what the Bible teaches about what God expects of us? I wasn't under any delusion that a single message would change their world, but I was determined to prepare something that would contribute to their lives beyond graduation day, something that would help them to choose a life that matters. As I prayerfully reflected on the major themes of Scripture where I had experienced God repeatedly in my life, I began crafting life lessons regarding how we are to think about Him, what He expects of us, and how we should relate to Him. I wanted to give them a taste of the marrow of the Christian life. These lessons were shaved and culled, and eventually took the form of seven essence statements. In reviewing these seven, I then began to notice that each of these positive commands of Scripture was contrasted with warnings and countering commands. Every do this had a corresponding don't do that. Now, I know that walking with God and experiencing the reality of Him cannot be reduced to a list of do's and don'ts. However, these clear commands of Scripture have served me well as boundaries and have directed my thoughts to God and living for His glory and pleasure. It is in that spirit that I offer them to you in this book. You might ask, are they really the seven? It would be arrogant to claim that I found the seven. My challenge to you is to take a look at these and see if you can find a better seven, or reduce them to two, as Jesus did when He was asked, What is the greatest commandment? There may be twelve. Send me your pass at it after you've tested it for a decade. But anchor them in the Scriptures. Which brings me to the second story I promised you. 